Hi, my name is Brandon Sugiyama, and in this video, I'll be going over an introduction to Bagwazang. I'll be covering basic body posture and hand positioning, some stationary footwork drills, turning, and some linear stepping drills that bring those skills together. Uh, before we get started, you'll need a little bit of open space, a high-backed chair, or a wall that you can use for support. Uh, first, let's go over the basic body posture for Bagua. Starting at the shoulders and the chest. The shoulders should be relaxed and dropped, as well as the chest should be uh, rounded or hollow. So in a lot of other martial arts or different movement modalities, you might find that your shoulders are back and your chest is pushed out. Uh, also, if you're used to sitting in front of a computer for long periods of time, you also might find that your shoulders are tight and they might shrug slightly upwards. So for Bagua, shoulders are dropped and the chest is hollow. By hollow, I mean if you took your hand and rubbed it across your chest from shoulder to shoulder, it should be concave, okay? Okay, next let's talk about the lower back and the hips. In other types of Chinese martial arts or modalities of movement, you might find that the lower back is, has a pronounced arch and your hips might be pushed backwards. So if we bring our attention to our hip bone or, or our tailbone, we want to rock the hips slightly forward with our tailbone pointing more down and the lower part of our back more neutral. So rather than this pronounced curve, hips are down, tailbone pointed towards the ground with our lower back neutral. Next, let's talk about basic hand position. So if we start with that Bagua posture with the shoulders relaxed and the chest hollow, the hips rocked forward with the lower back in a neutral position, we can begin with both hands with the palms face downwards and the fingers pointed towards one another. The hands should be about at your waistline, maybe just beneath your belly button and not too close to the body either. Maybe enough space so that uh, your fist would fit between your forefinger and your belly button here. Next, we'll work on some stationary footwork drills. And for this, we'll need that high-backed chair or a wall that you can use for support. Before we begin, if you're wearing shoes, let's go ahead and take off the shoes. In this first exercise, we'll be working on our ankle mobility and sensitivity, as well as coordination and balance that we'll be using to work up towards the mud sliding step later on. To begin, place one hand on the high backed chair or on the wall for support. Bring the feet very close together, bend the knees slightly, and bring the weight mostly onto the left foot. So let's begin by sliding the right foot forwards and backwards while keeping the entire base of the foot in contact with the ground. So all we're doing is gently sliding our foot backwards and forwards and coordinating our ankle movement so that the foot stays in contact with the ground. Okay, so most of the time when we're walking, we'll be using what's called heel to toe walking. So when we step out, the heel is the first thing that touches the ground. Then we rock forward onto the ball of the foot. Okay. Now in Bagua, at first it might seem very unnatural because we're kind of doing the opposite of that. So as we push forward, instead of our ankle flexing back, our ankle is actually going to flex slightly forward in order to keep the foot uh, the base of the foot parallel with the ground. Okay, once you've done this a few times on the right foot, we'll switch to the left foot. So same thing, just opposite side. Bend your knees slightly, bring most of your weight onto your right foot, and then gently slide the left foot forwards and backwards. while keeping the base of the foot in contact with the ground. So everything from the heel through the midsection of the foot 
onto the ball of the foot and the toes. We want to keep those sliding across the floor. Okay, do this several times on both legs in order to gain that sensitivity and the mobility in the ankle. And then we'll move on to the next drill. So now we'll be going through the same range of motion, but instead of the foot sliding across the ground, we'll be raising that foot up slightly and moving it so the base of the foot is parallel to the ground, uh, but raised up about one centimeter. So with one hand on the wall or on the chair, let's bend our knees slightly, raise our right foot slightly off the ground and move it forwards and backwards while keeping the base of the foot hovering above the ground and moving parallel to the floor. Now, while you're doing this exercise, if you feel like you're not able to sense the angle of your ankle, go ahead and go back to that first exercise with the foot on the ground slide it back and forth a few times, get used to that movement, then bring the foot slightly off the ground and continue forwards and backwards with the foot hovering off the ground about one centimeter. After you've done that a few times on the right foot, let's go ahead and switch to the left foot. So one hand on the wall or on the chair, bend your knees slightly, raise the left foot off the ground and move it forwards and backwards while keeping the base of the foot parallel and above the ground about one centimeter. If you need some tactile feedback to let you know if your foot is moving parallel with the ground, go ahead and go back to the first exercise. Place the foot on the ground, move it forwards and backwards as it's sliding and staying in contact with the ground. Do this a few times to get that sensitivity. Then raise the foot off of the ground and go through the same range of motion with the foot about a centimeter off the ground. Now, don't worry if at first this feels a little bit awkward or if you feel like you don't have that ankle mobility and flexibility. This will all take time. Just go ahead and go through these two exercises, alternating from left to right until this begins to feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, for this next exercise, we'll be going through the same range of movement with our foot hovering above the ground and moving forwards and backwards uh, with our base of our foot parallel to the ground. But at this time, instead of staying stationary, working just with one foot, we'll be shifting our weight from our right foot to our left foot, as well as shifting our weight forwards and backwards. So staying close to that wall or the high backed chair for support, we'll start with our weight 100% on our left foot our knees are slightly bent, and we'd be working with our right foot. So whereas before we were just sliding the right foot backwards and forwards, this time when we slide our right foot forwards, we will place the right foot on the ground, shift our weight forward, and our left foot will come to meet the right, but we will not place it down. So I'll show you from the forwards angle. So our weight is 100% on our left foot. Our knees are slightly bent. I'll bring that right foot off the ground slightly. I'll slide the right foot forward, place it on the ground, and have the left foot follow and hover next to the right foot. Then we'll take the left foot, slide it back along the same path, and bring our weight back to our left foot. With our right foot coming back to meet, but hovering on the right side. Let's try this again from this angle and then I'll show you from the side. All of my weight is on my left foot. 
my right foot is hovering about a centimeter off the ground. I'll push the right foot forward, place it on the ground, and my left foot will come to meet it and stay hovering next to it. Then we'll push the left foot back, place our weight on our left foot, and bring the right foot back parallel to the ground and bring it back hovering next to the left foot. I'll show this to you from the side angle. We'll bend our knees slightly. All of our weight is on our left foot and we will raise the right foot. We will push the right foot forward with the base of the foot moving parallel to the ground, place the right foot down, shift our weight forward and bring the left foot to meet the right, but with the left foot hovering over the ground. Then we'll go back. We'll push the left foot back along the same path, place our weight on the left foot, shift our weight and bring the right foot back with the sole moving parallel to the ground and have that right foot hover next to the left. Let's do this a few times together, okay? Right foot pushes forward place the right foot on the ground, shift our weight forward, bring the left foot to meet the right, hovering on the ground, then we'll go back, push the left foot back, plus the left foot on the ground, shift the weight back, bring the right foot back to meet the left. Again, right foot forward, left foot follows, left foot back, right foot follows, right foot forward, Left foot follows, left foot back, right foot follows, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. Let's go ahead and switch legs. This time I'll do it facing the camera so you can see. So we'll start by bending our knees slightly, bringing all of our weight onto our right foot, lifting the left foot up, push the left foot forward, place the left foot down, shift the weight forward and have the right foot follow. Push the right foot back, shift the weight to the right foot, bring our weight back and the left foot comes back. Left foot forward, Right foot follows, right foot back, left foot follows. Left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, and down. Okay, once you've done this drill several times, on both the left foot and the right foot. We can go ahead and try this without the use of additional support, okay? So we can move slightly away from the wall. We can put that chair aside. For this next exercise, we'll be going through the same range of motion, the same movement pattern. We'll also be bringing in that Bagua Pasha that we talked about before. So we'll start out with our shoulders relaxed and our chest hollow. Right? Our hips slightly rocked forward with our tailbone pointed down and the small of our back in a neutral position. Our hands, we can just have them resting on our waist. And we'll start by bending our knees slightly, bringing your weight to your left foot, raising the right foot up. We will step forward, shift, left foot follows and hold. You might have to kind of fight for your balance a little bit here. That's okay. Push the left foot back, shift back, right foot follows and hovers. Kind of fight for that balance here. Step forward with the right, shift the weight forward, left foot follows, keep that foot hovering. Push the left foot back, shift the weight, and the right foot follows back and hovers. While you're doing this exercise, if you feel like you're going to lose balance, you can do this near the wall so you can put your hand out for support. Also, 
when we are stepping forward. And if that following foot, if you're having difficulty keeping it hovering next to the other foot, go ahead and put it down for a second. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Both in our forward state and also when we come back, if we come back and we're off balance, go ahead and put that foot down. Okay. Let's switch feet. We'll do it on the other side. Okay. Stepping with the left foot, hands on the waist, bend the knees slightly, bring the weight all the way onto your right foot and bring the left foot up, push the left foot forward, place it down, shift the weight forward and have the right foot come to meet the left and hover next to it, push the right foot back, shift the weight backwards, have the left foot come back to meet the right and hover next to it. Step with the left, shift, bring the right up to meet the left, Push the right back, shift the weight, bring the left foot back to meet the right. Try this a few more times. Left foot forward, shift the weight, right foot comes to meet it, push the right foot back, shift the weight, left foot comes to meet it. Left, right follows, right, left follows. Left, right follows, right, left follows. Okay. Try this exercise on both legs several times until you become a little bit more comfortable with this motion. Now that you've had a chance to work on the stationary stepping girls on both the right and left foot, we can move on to the basic turning step for Bagua. This is called the Kopu and the Baibu. We can also refer them as a hooking step or a sweeping step. So if we are turning to the right, our outside foot is the left foot. Turning to my right, the left foot is on the outside. In that case, the right foot is our inside foot. Okay? So in order to turn right, we will initiate the turn with the outside foot, which is the left foot. And this is the kobu. The left foot will step and turn 90 degrees in front of the right foot. Then the baibu is the right foot is lifted up and turns 90 degrees to the right. I'll do that again from the side view. So I'm turning right. The left foot turns 90 degrees and we place it in front of the right foot. Then we shift the weight to our left, our right foot lifts up, turns 90 degrees and is placed next to the left foot. Okay? So pay attention to the alignment of your toes, okay? When we step with the kobu, we're not overstepping. We're just stepping in front of the left foot or the right foot, I'm sorry. And the right foot is not stepping too far out. It's making a tight turn, stepping next to the left foot. Okay. So from the side view, kobu with the left, 90 degrees. Baibu with the right, 90 degrees. And then bring the left foot back to meet the right. So we've just turned 180 degrees. So we've changed our direction from facing in this direction with a kobu, baibu. Then the left foot comes to meet the right. We've done 180 degrees. Okay. We do the same thing for turning left, but in the opposite order. So turning to the left, we will start with the right foot, which is the outside foot. Turning left, the right foot is the outside foot. We'll start with a kobu, turn the right foot 90 degrees, stepping it in front of the left. Then a baibu with the left. The left foot picks up, turns 90 degrees from the right foot. The left foot comes to meet, the right foot comes to meet the left, and then we're facing the other direction. So let's try this a few times, turning right and left. We'll essentially be staying in the same place. So bend the knees slightly, hands on the waist, bagua posture with the shoulders relaxed, our chest is hollow, hips are slightly rocked forward with the tailbone facing down, 
and the lower part of our back in a neutral position. We'll kobu with the left. So bring the left foot up, turn it 90 degrees, place it in front of the right foot, shift the weight to the left, turn the right foot 90 degrees from the left foot, bring the left foot to meet the right. Let's turn to the left. We'll initiate that with the right foot, which is the outside foot. Pick up the right foot, turn it 90 degrees, place it in front of the left, pick up the left foot, turn it 90 degrees from the right foot, bring the right foot to meet. Okay, we'll do that a few times. Kobu, Baibu, feet come to meet. Right foot, ko, left foot, bai, right foot, meet. Ko, bai, meet, ko, bai, meet. Okay, so this is the basic turning steps for Bagua. Next, we'll move on to some moving drills, incorporating the stepping, the turning, posture and hand position. For this next stepping exercise, we're going to revisit the hand position that we went over earlier in the video. So once again, we'll start with the Bagua posture, which is shoulders down, the chest is hollow, hips are slightly rocked forward with our lower back in a neutral position. The hands will be placed with the palms facing down and the fingers pointed towards one another and the hands should be right around waist level or just beneath your belly button, okay? So starting on one side of the room, we'll bend our knees slightly, bagua posture, and start with our hand position. We'll be doing three steps, beginning with our right foot. So bring the weight up onto the left, raise the right foot, push the right foot forward, shift the weight, Bring the left foot to meet the right and hover. Then push the left foot forward. Place it on the ground. Shift the weight. Follow with the right. Then push the right foot forward. Shift the weight. The left comes to meet. Then we will turn with a kobu with the left. We'll turn 90 degrees, stepping in front of our right foot. Continue turning with the right foot, a baibu to the right. Left foot comes to meet the right. Then we will go back, stepping with the left. Step with the left. Follow with the right. Push the right foot forward. Shift the weight. Step with the left. The right foot comes to meet. And then kobu with the right Baibu with the left. Right foot comes to meet. Okay, do this drill several times on both sides. Stepping three steps. Kobu, baibu, come back to meet. Then in the opposite direction. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Get used to this stepping. Uh, the control of that foot being raised and hovering just one centimeter off the ground and sliding horizontally, parallel to the ground. Work on the kobu and the baibu. And then we'll work on the next exercise. Okay, before we move on to the next exercise, let's work on coordinating the upper body and our lower body while we're turning. So let's face to the left, and we'll be doing a, a kobu, baibu, to the right. Uh, this time, let's start with our bagua posture. Shoulders relaxed, chest is hollow. Tailbone pointed downwards with the lower part of our back in our neutral position. Bend the knees slightly. Bring the hands in front of us. This time, we're going to turn the body to the right. Okay? So even though my hips are facing forward, my upper body is going to be turning to the right. Okay, ideally, you would like your upper body be to, to be turned 90 degrees from your lower body. If that feels uncomfortable, that's fine. To start, we can just go at 45 degrees. So while I'm turning my upper body, you can look at my legs and my hips. They are not turning. So 
In this position, both my shoulders and my hips are facing in the same direction. When I turn, my hips and my knees stay facing forward. So I'm not shifting my legs, my knees, nor my hips. Okay. Knees, hips, toes are facing one direction. My upper body and turns ideally 90 degrees. 45 degrees is fine. So for reference, I'll keep my upper body facing towards the camera, towards you. And my lower body will be doing a kobu and baibu, uh, right and left. So we'll start with the left leg is going to execute a kobu in. Baibu out. Notice my chest is still facing the camera. Left foot comes to meet. So now my feet, my knees, and my hips are facing the opposite direction that we started from, but my chest and my shoulders remain pointed towards the camera, relative 90 degrees relative to the hips now. We'll try the kobu and baibu to the left. Right foot will do a kobu. Left foot does a baibu. Chest and shoulders remain pointed in the same direction. Right foot comes to meet. We'll do that again to the right. Keeping your chest facing in the same direction. Ko. Bai. Left foot comes to meet the right. We'll go in the opposite direction. Right foot. Ko. Bai. Right foot comes to meet the left. All the while keeping your chest facing in the same direction. One more rotation. Left foot, ko. Right foot, bai. Left foot meets the right. Chest remains pointed forward. Opposite direction, right foot, ko. Left foot, bai. Right foot comes to meet the left. Okay, try that a few times on both sides. Once you feel comfortable with it, we'll move on to the next exercise. Okay, now we're going to return to the same linear stepping with 180 degree turning, going back and forth, but we'll be incorporating the upper body hand position and turning of the upper body relative to our legs. So starting position uh, on one side of the room, we'll be going right, left, right, kobu, baibu, left, right, left, kobu, baibu. But this time, Instead of our chest pointed forwards, pointing in the direction that we're stepping, we'll keep our chest pointed ideally 90 degrees. So in this case, I'm going to keep my chest pointed towards the camera. If you can't go 90 degrees, 45 degrees is fine. Okay? So we'll start. Bend at the knees. Bagua posture. Shoulders down. Chest hollow. Tailbone facing down. Small of the back in a neutral position. Bring the hands in front of the body, then turn, ideally 90 degrees, 45 degrees is fine. We'll be starting with the right foot. So bring the weight over to the left foot, raise the right foot, step forward with the right, shift the weight, left foot comes to meet. Step with the left, right foot comes to meet. Step with the right left foot comes to meet, then we will do a kobu with the left, baibu with the right, chest remains pointing in the same direction, left foot comes to meet the right. Now our toes, our knees, and our hips have turned 180 degrees, but my chest remains pointed in the same direction, in this case towards the camera. Now we'll do uh, left, right, left. Bring the weight over to the right foot. Left foot raises up. Step with the left. Follow with the right. Step with the right. Follow with the left. Step with the left. Follow with the right. And a kobu with the right. Baibu with the left. Right foot comes to meet the left. And the entire time my chest remains pointed at the camera. 
Let's try this a couple more times. Bend the knees. Bagua posture. Shoulders relaxed. Chest is hollow. Tailbone pointed down. Small of the back in neutral. Bring the hands in front of the waist. Turn the upper body only. Then we will step right. Left. Right. Left comes to meet and does a kobu. Baibu. Left foot meets. Our chest remains pointed in the same direction. Our toes, knees, and hips have turned 180 degrees. Try this exercise several times, walking left and right. If you have access to a space that's larger than my one bedroom in Brooklyn, New York, you can continue doing more steps. You can do 10 steps, 20 steps, turn 180 and come back. So this drill is working on initially the footwork, controlling the feet. We're also working on the turning, the kobu and the baibu. And also just as importantly, you're working on keeping that bagua posture throughout the moves, even if you feel like you're losing balance or if you feel like your most of your intention or your attention is going towards your legs, keeping the upper body in that posture and also turning the upper body relative to the lower body. So as the lower body, the legs, knees and the hips are turning, the upper body is turning also relative to the lower body. So as one turns in one direction, the other turns in the other direction. Uh, you can take any of these drills all the way back to working in socks and sliding your feet on the ground, all the way up to standing and walking with the body uh, 90 degrees to the lower body. Try them out. Uh, pay attention to when you feel uh, challenged, when you might feel like you're losing balance, and just keep working uh, and practicing until those things begin to feel more comfortable. I hope you enjoyed this introductory video to Bagua Zong. If you did, please give us a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. In future videos, I'll be going over circle walking and some of the palm changes. Until then, this is Brandon Sugiyama from Jayo.com. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.